Welcome to my Google Ads tutorial for 2024. Hi, my name is Dathan Fairley. I am a digital marketing expert. I've been doing digital marketing, specifically Google Ads or Google AdWords marketing since 2009. In today's tutorial, I'm going to cover some very special items for those who are beginning as a Google Ads advertiser or those who have been out of the game for a while. Fortunately for us, Google has released their changes for 2024 early. So those of you who follow this guide are going to have a jump start on those who wait to open their account in just a couple of weeks. A lot of the training from Google ads is very complicated. They're using terms and, and ideas and concepts that they just assume you know about. But me as a marketer, I'm going to try to break this down to a third grade reading level if I can. That way you can understand everything that's going on so you don't make any mistakes and you can be confident when you open your Google ads account. I'm going to teach you how to stay out of trouble because <laughs> Google has rules and a lot of people violate their rules when they just just get started. In fact, they have something called an account suspension. That's when you've been kicked off of their network. And the majority of account suspensions happen right from what you do when you open the Google ads account. I am a Google ads policy specialist and I will be incorporating all of the hangups that a lot of new people do when they're opening a Google ads account or when they're creating their very first campaign. So let's get started. First and foremost, we're going to start at the very beginning before you open your account. Don't just run up to the top and click start. Now there are some things you're going to need to have in place before you even begin this process. Process. Number one, you need to have an email account ready to go before you open your account. Number two, you need to have a cell phone number ready to go before you open your account about your mobile device. It cannot be some secondary number on some virtual or vanity number. You need to have a SIM card. Okay. Now you may be able to use a landline, but I think Google has moved away from that now. So you need to have those two in order. The other thing I'm going to tell you about your email address, the person who is opening this account, I encourage it to be the person that's actually going to be the contact person for your Google ads account. It will make things easier down the line. Google has a lot of verification processes and they really want things nice and easily verifiable for those who are opening a Google ads account. The next thing I'm going to tell you is be in your normal location. If you're traveling internationally or you're out of state or don't attempt this process, it can create problems later. Potentially wait till you get home or in the office for your business, wherever you normally are. Let's assume you have those in place. Now let's go back to the account, whatever your native language is, or your number one language is to come down here to the bottom of this page and choose the language that serves you best. My first and really my only language is English. My second language is bad English. So I'm going to stick with the United States English. Now we're ready to go. So I'm going to click start now with my email and my phone number handy. So once I click start now, it's going to load up and it's going to take you through a series of questions. This interface has changed a lot. If you're coming from Google AdWords, this is going to look like a foreign entity to you based on what you were accustomed to. But for those who are new, they're trying to make it user friendly. I'm be honest with you. They uh, they've released all their changes for this year, but those of you who view this later in the year, this might be looking differently for you because they're always testing easier ways for people to get started. So the very first they're telling you here, you're going to create your first campaign in a few steps. They want to get you started nice and easy. So we're going to do business information, create ads and set a budget. So let's first create your first campaign. The very first thing it's asking is tell us about your business. What's your business name? This is a very important part. It may seem like nothing, but it is something. The reality is if you are a business operating as a business, make sure you put your business name here. If you are just a person and you don't plan on doing business, you want to use Google ads to let's say, let's say you have a website that has AdSense on it and you're just putting your website out there to get noticed. 
but you're not really promoting a business, you know, a product or a service or anything like that. Then you can put your personal name here. I don't encourage you putting your personal name here because Google ads is really a place for businesses to promote products and services, not really for individuals. You can, there's a lot of rules with payment profiles, which you don't know what that means yet. It says optional. I don't think this is optional. Really put your business name. So I'm just going to say, Hey, this is Dathan Fairley LLC make something up it says where should people go after clicking your ad this is where you put your website in we're just going to put my website in here dathanfairly.com all right and they say optional they're really not i'm gonna click next and it's reviewing my website because it's going to make some suggestions again it's trying to make this as easy as possible this is google's ai program going to work now it's loaded up and it says hey we want to know a little bit more about your linked accounts now if you have a google business profile phone number or youtube channel you can add this now it does complicate things a little bit but for now i'm just going to skip this because few people do that those are very special businesses I'm gonna click next here and now it's gonna ask me to choose my goal for this campaign so here's this idea of a campaign it's using it in a marketing sense so whenever we want to do marketing we create what's called a marketing campaign and Google uses the same language. What campaign is, is the overall name and strategy for what the marketing is about. That's all you need to know about the name. They are asking you what your objectives are for this marketing campaign. You have purchases, so if people buy your product, you have submit a lead form. If you are a lead generator, let's say you're life insurance and you, you're not really concerned about promoting your website, you want people to see an ad see a form fill it out and become an instant lead then you would choose submit lead form if you just want phone calls for your business you would choose phone call leads people would see your ad and they would see a phone number and they click it and it would directly call your number as soon as they click it that's a mobile campaign page views again this is for people that are using google ads in a non-traditional way you know you're promoting an article you're promoting a, promoting a youtube page or you know it's more like personal use stuff you can do that and brand awareness now i actually don't encourage you if you are a beginner to use brand awareness large corporations use brand awareness this is they want to get their name out there the reason why google's asking you this is because they have ai tools that will try to optimize your advertising to meet these objectives choose this carefully um, you can always skip this but I'm gonna show you what they have more here some of you are app developers and you're trying to promote your app you would choose app here uh, if you are a lead generator you can get even more narrow and choose what types of leads you are trying to get as far as sales you can start putting in here okay I want to do a campaign that focuses on people adding the cart beginning to check out who just purchased or sign up for a subscription I mean you could really get Get detailed in here as far as what your campaign objectives are I'm gonna choose the one that pretty much everyone has and that is purchases what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click next so in this section what I'm going to tell you is you need to go up here to these three dots okay click these three dots go over here to view other campaign types and don't worry about the rest of that now you have more manual control over the type of campaign you're going to run so campaign is your overall marketing objective campaign type is what technology inside of google are you going to use to advertise so that can be confusing but these are really really simple things and some of these you're going to recognize so right at the top they're recommending performance max this is a tremendous tool. Basically, Performance Max is Google's new AI technology that they say, hey, you give me your ads and your advertisements that you plan to run, and I, Google, will go and decide who to show them to, when to show them to them, and where to show them to them. So you'll give them you know, the written text ads, which is the written words, 
or banner ads, which is, again, you see the image and it's an advertisement or video ads, and you would put them in this Performance Max campaign and Google will decide when to show them on search, when to show them on YouTube, when to show them in people's Gmail box, they're going to do that. It's pretty cool. In fact, if it wasn't so complicated, I would tell you to use this campaign. However, if you're a beginner, you definitely don't have assets, which are your ads. You don't have them ready. Typically, this is let's call this a goal to do this, but to get started, you shouldn't. Now, the next one is search. This is what everyone is accustomed to. You go to google.com, type it in uh, what you're looking for, and boop, a list of websites pop up and you have ads around it, sponsored ads. And this is gonna be my recommended start for all of you. The reason why is it's the lowest hanging fruit. If you are running ads for the first time, you're gonna need success early and you're gonna need controllable success. Search is the best way to accomplish it. It is still the most trusted advertisement out there on Google. We will come back to that, but I wanna show you the rest. Display network, now I'm just gonna talk about this as if you used to do AdWords and you're coming over to Google Ads now. Display used to be called Content Network. This is where you put your ads on websites, either in banners or in text ads, and in some cases, video ads, but that is the equivalent to the content network. This is a very aggressive strategy. The most amount of customers are on display network but it's also the most complicated. I would say if you're new, avoid this one initially. I'm gonna show you more. So video ads, and this is gonna be a really important part of your advertising. In fact, I honestly would say you go search campaigns, video ads, and then performance max. That would be my recommendation for your progression with Google ads, because I gotta be honest, everyone wants video ads now. The world has completely changed. It is the juice now. It is complicated to learn, but it's a necessity. I mean, you really don't have a choice. If you don't learn learn video ads, you're gonna have some success and you're gonna stop there. You're, you're not gonna be able to break through and you're gonna be wondering, how do I break through? Well, you, you're gonna have to learn how to do video ads. Apps is gonna be a specialized category. Discovery is a pretty cool tool, but I honestly like Performance Max better now. So I'm gonna skip over that in smart campaigns. Performance Max is a better smart campaign. Ignore discovery, ignore smart. We're going to focus on search for now because that's going to be the best for you. And if I was starting a campaign today, brand new, I would start with search. The next thing that's going to happen is Google ads is going to create some keywords for me. It's pulling them from my website and it's trying to show me what I'm relevant to. So first and foremost, what is a keyword? A keyword is a term that people typically search for on Google. We use keywords to target our audience. So if we want to find people that are interested in lip gloss, that type in lip gloss, the keyword is lip gloss. And you can see here, they pulled from my website all this Google ad stuff. These keywords, I tell you, I honestly would encourage you to not use these and pick your own keywords. So I'm gonna actually delete all these. And here's what I encourage you to do, just very simply open up a tab, make sure you're in incognito mode. I am in Chrome. It's usually the best or the, the most compatible with Google ads. There's less crashes. I would go to google.com. I would come over here and I would type in lip gloss, and then it will show you the most common things that people mean when they type in lip gloss. I'm just going to click enter because I want to show you a couple of other things. Also, 
down at the bottom of the page, there's something called related searches. This will also show you what people typically mean when they type in lip gloss. These keywords are significantly better to use than what they're recommending after they scan your website. Here's the thing about keywords. There's an order of what keyword people most likely to purchase from. Not all keywords are created equal. There is stages that people go through mentally and in their research before they get to the point where they want to buy something. Typically what happens in the buying decisions of people, you're trying to sell your product, you're trying to sell your service, trying to acquire new customers or leads. They start at the very top. Okay, let me show you what it is. I'm gonna switch over to the tablet here. All right, when it comes to decision-making by customers, they come in at three levels. The first level is they have a problem. They don't know much about it. They just know they have a problem. And so they start researching Google about the problem. Now, after they research it, they, be, they become more educated about the problem. And then now they are aware. And so now they start researching solutions. So when they're researching solutions, they type in like keywords that have more than one word. You know, they, they might have 10 words sometimes, but they're trying to narrow down their solution. They're trying to understand what solutions are out there for them. And the third level is when they are typing in specific products or companies. How does this look from a keyword level? So from a keyword level, one to two words typically here. It's not very many words. Chapped lips are what's called a level one Google search. There is a ton of people typing this in. If you saw the amount of searches done on chapped lips, it would be in the millions on a monthly basis. You would think you want to go after those millions of people, but there's a consequence. Not only is there a lot of traffic, the people are not ready to buy. So you can spend a lot of money going after those people because they, they have a problem. They have chapped lips, but they don't know what they don't know about the solution. So if you go after those people, you're going to have to educate them. You have to start at the problem and take them all the way through the education process, build rapport with them. And then at the very end of that entire process introduce solutions okay it's a it's a it's a process most of you are trying to turn a profit so i would say in the beginning stay away from level one keywords unless it's a necessity for your business model level two is where most of you are going to be at level two there's usually two to ten keywords it's like a big long phrase, how to find lip gloss that is clear, purple lip gloss, things like that. They, they finally figured out that, hey, a good solution for chap lips is lip gloss, but they want a specific color. So that is level two research that searchers are doing. Keywords that target them are really, I, I gotta tell you, the competition is heavy very high is the competition on level two. Very expensive keywords, they're, they are expensive. But the reason why there's so much competition and they're so expensive is because there's a lot of money to be made there. You know, all the different lip glosses that are purple, all the different companies are competing to try to get their business. Most of you are gonna start at level two. In fact, most of your keywords are gonna be level two. So when we go back to the interface, we're gonna be talking about level two keywords. However, as good as that is, there's an even better level that is far more profitable. Now, I'm not gonna to go too much into this, but for beginners, just understand there's a level three. Level three is what we call micro niche. And micro niche advertise, advertising, or some of you call it micro niche. It is like people know what products or services they need and they're researching them directly. Our example, people are typing in Reveline um, to matte gloss finish purple. Or they might type in Reveline lip gloss. They are very specific. They, they know kind of what product they're looking for. 
a lot of times the word review will be tagged on these keywords. The cheapest clicks in the most profit are in level three. It's not even close, but don't just jump in there as a new beginning because there's things called trademark rules and other problems that you have to deal with. There's very specific marketing strategies. So I would say beginner, stay away from level three, but man, if you are into high profit, this is the way to go. You will do some level three on your own products because you want to make sure you dominate your name, you dominate your products. You want to be the number one ad on those, but for the vast market, you're going to be a level two back to the campaign we are creating so let's do a more realistic search so i'm going to type in um google ads uh course you see a few of these here google ads course google ads course free google ads course 2023 let's do google ads course 2024 i'm just going to choose that one i think that one will be good now don't just go Google ads course 2024. Now, I'm going to tell you why. And by the way, you could have five to 10 of these in here, uh, depending on what makes sense for you. But there's something called match types with Google ads. And you can see them talk about that in this little help button over here. Match type. What does that even mean? The AI system inside of Google tries to expand your reach to customers based on how you put your keyword in here. You could put your keyword in here three different ways. I can just write Google Ads course 2024, or I can put these parentheses around it. And I will explain what that does. Or I can put these brackets around it. If you used to use AdWords, you're familiar with these, but they operate completely differently today. For those of you from AdWords, this could be worth your time just to learn this. Let me start at the top. When you write a keyword in just with nothing extra, nothing special on it, that is called a broad match keyword. Broad is the key here. The reason they call it broad match is because they're going to take your keyword and match it very broadly to what people are searching for. I have Google Ads course 2024. Someone on Google search may type in Bing Ads 2023 and my advertising could show up for them. Why? Broad, loosely associated. They're going to show it. So be very careful with broad match. I don't actually encourage it for new beginners because it is very loose. Cheap clicks, but it is hard to... to manage that thing. And when I say manage, I mean like keep cost under control and stuff like that. Now the next level down, and I'm just going to put some spaces so it's easy to see, is what's called parentheses around them. This is called a phrase match. Again, phrase match. This one right here. Phrase match means this. Like if anyone types in these four words in any order in a phrase, in a keyword, if you will, your ad will show. They will show for Google Ads course 2024 when people type that into Google search. It will show up for 2024 course ads Google when people type that in a search. It will show up for is being better than Google ads and what courses are there available here in 2024. All the phrase means is these words must be what people type in. So that is a step down or more, more specific than broad match, but it's still pretty loose. Um, phrase match is a pretty good way to start. Although I prefer people to go with the next one. The next one with the brackets around it is called exact match this one right here. And I will tell you, shame on Google. That is a deceiving phrase. Exact match doesn't mean exact match, even though it says that. If you're from AdWords, this is going to rock your world. 
So when I put brackets around a keyword, it says only show me to people that type this phrase in exactly like this and exactly in this order or people who, who type in things that mean this. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you the scenarios. This is a new definition. If I am a searcher and I type in Google Ads Course 2024, I'm going to show. If I type in Bing Ads Course 2024, I'm not going to show. But if I type in, are there any AdWords courses for 2024 for, for, for beginners? I will show. Because the two mean the same thing even though they're not spelled the same. There's good and there's bad with this. The good is you you reach people you otherwise would not have reached with exact match that mean the same thing. The bad is you're relying on the algorithm to actually know what it means. If you're from AdWords, you're shocked right now because that was not the meaning of this, but that is a new meaning for this. The other thing is it will show for misspellings. So if someone accidentally misspells Google, you will show. So they do account for that. As a beginner, I encourage you to not do broad, get rid of that, and stay with either phrase or exact. And if you're really, really picky, honestly, if it were me, I'm getting started. I'm brand new. I know what I know. I'm starting with exact because I'm going to have a low budget. I need to make my make sure my shots count as I get started here. And that that's going to be the best way to go, in my opinion. I'm just going to do an exact match of Google Ads course 2024 for now. They have a lot of other tools here and suggestions, and they're telling you to add more keywords and all of this. But honestly, you really need to be careful. It is important that you have control over what's happening in your account when you're brand new experts or advanced people can expand okay and you will become one but i want to set you up for success now the next area is your location there's a lot to say about this i'm going to click on this location settings and believe it or not don't skip the section this is actually very important starting at the top it's asking you to select what location you want to target. If you do not change this, you may find your targeting might be very narrow or way too broad. This is where like you want your advertising to show, not not where you are. So you have a couple of different levels of targeting and we're gonna go through those. So you can do the top level and believe it or not, there is a method where you do the top level, where you target every single country and territory that Google Ads is in. That's a lot of people, but there is a strategy where that makes sense. And none of them are beginner strategies. <laughs> I'm going to skip past that one. The next one is they will probably default to an area where everyone speaks the same language. The United States and Canada are chosen here. That is the second option. Those of you in other parts of the country, or other parts of the world, will this option will be different. Or I can go specifically down to my country or territory or state. Now you have what's called custom locations and I'm going to assume most of you are going to be choosing this one and I'm in the United States. So it's going to look a certain way. So when I click on custom locations, I have several options to choose. I want to target a different state. Let's say I want to target Ohio. I type it in. When I type it in, what's going to pop up is a bunch of different areas that I can target when I'm targeting Ohio. I can target the whole state. I can target the county. I can target kind of metro areas. I can really get down to the zip code even if I wanted to. I'm just going to choose target Ohio for now. Now, the other thing you can do is you can add a bunch of places in bulk. So if I click on that location, I can, you know, type in um, pencil. No, let's choose an easy one. New York. <laughs> um, and I can restrict. So this is like a negative. Now you do negatives by countries initially, but you can get granular later. So maybe, you know, there's a country in here I don't want. You can make that a negative as well. Once you've chosen where you want to run your ads, where you want your customers to be, then you need to decide 
which of those customers you want to see it. Meaning this, go to location options. Now you're ready to click that drop down and there's something called target and excluded. The first option, which is the default option is people who are in or regularly in or show interest in, in this case, Ohio in the United States. That's people that live there. There's people that are traveling through there and that's people in another country looking for stuff about Ohio. If that does not fit you, especially like if you are a local business owner, it's not gonna do you any good having people all around the world typing in Ohio and whatever your keyword is, then you need to choose this next one. And that only chooses people in or regularly in your targeted location. So basically people that live here are, are often in this area. Pros and cons of that option. The pro is you don't waste a lot of money on people that frankly are never gonna buy from you because they're not really in Ohio. The, the con is you may miss business from people that are traveling through Ohio and because they're not normally in Ohio, they're passing through visiting or whatever. And that can, that can be a hard choice to make, but there's, you know, that's why they recommend you do the first one. So you don't miss out on any business, but <laughs> you're going to get a lot more traffic than that will ever buy from you there. So you got to make a decision. What I'm going to do in this, I'm just going to choose that one for now. I'm going to restrict my ability to show a little bit. Now exclude it right now. I didn't add anyone to my excluded locations, but let's say I chose an entire country or I chose worldwide or whatever, then, you know, I might want to add some exclusions to certain areas within those places. Say, for example, I chose Ohio, but I don't want anyone from Dayton, Ohio. Okay. I don't like those people whatever, you know, I mean, I live there, but let's say I don't like them. So I, I can choose, you know, exclude people from Dayton, Ohio here and go with that one. And this will say people that are in regularly in or who's shown interest in, I mean, that just gets rid of them all. Or I can say, Hey, listen, if they just happen to be in Dayton or they live in Dayton, I only want to exclude those people. I just don't want to exclude every single person that has ever had any interest in Dayton. You might not want to do that, but that's a, that's a call on your end. It's perfectly fine to leave the first one gone. I actually agree with this, but for some of you, the, the other one will make sense. Now going down to languages, I'm in the United States, so I'm just going to choose English. Okay. This next area is audience segments and this is going to require some explanation because it's it's a little complicated here there are people already in existence that have interest in what you might be selling they've been on google their whole entire lives google has collected all that data to know basically who likes stuff and who doesn't they're giving you a leg up to actually be able to target only those people who have already shown an interest in what you're selling, even before they search. And remember, a search is only one element of people's interest. Before they search, they may have been on social media. They may have been in their email account getting emails from someone. They may be on YouTube. Like they show interest in something other ways than just typing in a search. And Google has all that data. What they're able to do is lump people into what they call audience segments based on their interest. And you are able to use that to make your keywords more effective. So it layers on top of your keyword. So let's say I, I want people that want to Google ads course for 2024, but I layer on top of it, people who've already purchased a course, right? So I layer them on top of each other and it narrows down the audience from people that want the course to people that want the course and have already bought a course before. That's what audience segments can do for you. Now there's a downside to this because that sounds incredible, right? And it is, but the downside is cookies and data. What I mean by that is out of 100% of the people that Google tracks, they may only be authorized to show the data on less than half of them. 
So let's say out of a hundred percent of the people, let's do let's do a uh, sex, male and female. You have roughly half the population is male, roughly half is female. It should be a hundred percent pie on Google tracking, right? No, no. But because people hide their identity, people opt out of their identity being shared um, in certain rules from certain countries like the EU, they're not able to disclose that. What you'll see in Google is you'll have maybe. 20% of the people are female, 20% are male, and then 60% is what's called unknown. They're not allowed to disclose it. So you you can't really target them effectively. The downside is you may, if you overlap one of these audience segments on top of your keyword, you might get a fraction of a fraction because Google can't let you target 100% of the audience because of privacy issues. You may severely restrict your ability to get customers if you do it. It might be worth it. I'm not saying it's not worth it, but you're going to have to make a judgment call there if having like knowing, knowing 100% for sure that person is an absolute potential customer versus, hey, you know, just as long as you show me kind of around people that may be customers, you got to make the decision between the unknown or knowing for sure. Is there a balance here? There is. It's just, it's just not really good for a beginner to try to deal with. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you some of the options. You can type in things or you can just kind of browse what's available. If you click browse right here, you're able to get into detailed targeting about who they are, like their parental status. You can see here, are they a parent? Are they not? Are they married? Are they not? What's their education level? You can even go to what other interests or habits have they had in the past, right? So let's say I'm going to go down banking. You know, these people are avid investors. You might click that to layer it on top of your keywords. It's all pretty cool. Now, let's just say hypothetically, I want people that want my course and they're avid investors lay that on top of it. Okay, that's fine. Down here under targeting settings for this campaign. You know, they're using these words like targeting settings, which has not been explained what targeting means. Targeting just means the customer you're going after. Right here, you have two options. They default to observation, which I don't like. And you have something called targeting. So observation means they won't just narrow who it shows to the avid investors that want a Google Ads course for 2024. They will find people that, hey, you know, you're saying avid investors, but we think people that like playing basketball also is a good fit. We're going to show them to those people too. That's giving Google a lot of freedom. I would choose this one because what targeting does is it narrows it down to, yes, they must be in the avid investors column. They have to be there. If they're not in there, they're not allowed to be shown my ad when they type in Google ads course 2024. I don't really like overlapping these audiences with my keywords um, because I am an account manager. This is what I do. I like to be hands on. I tend to be less of let Google do things, more of me manually do them. But for you, that that could be perfectly fine. So I'm going to clear that for now. Just, you know, let me go down now past audience segments. And now, and if you wonder what I did, I just collapsed it so you can stay with me. And now I'm down to network. What Google categorizes their platforms, because Google has a lot of platforms on Google ads. It isn't just Google ads. It's Google search ads, video ads, YouTube. There's display ads. There's shopping ads, discovering ads. I mean, they, they got what they call a lot of platforms is what those called networks right here. They defaulted you into search network and display network. Now, this is specifically a Google search campaign. I'm going to uncheck display network. You will notice there is another checkbox here on search called Google search partners. What a Google search partner is, is other companies that Google is partnered with that have a search network to 
and they incorporated them into their interface. A classic example, AOL has a search and they partner with Google and you'll show on Google search and you will show on AOL. Uh, Yahoo has a search, right? Although they're partnered with Bing, but you know, that's a classic example. So it just expands how much traffic you can get. And when I say traffic, how many visitors and clicks you can get beyond just people that are on google.com or google.co.uk or whatever it is in your country. I don't start off with this. I uncheck it. The reason I uncheck it is when I, I need to know what is actually happening with my advertising in the beginning, I need as much information as possible. Google gives you z just like almost zero information about what's happening on these search partner search engines. Only thing you get is the results. You don't know why or anything like that. I don't like that lack of information. I uncheck it. With all that, that's the last thing on the list. I'm going to click done. And so I got my location, I got my languages, my audience, and uh, I got Google search. All right, I'm gonna click next. All right, the next area is going to have you create your text ads. Text is literally the written ads, like for they're all words on the Google search engine. So they preload some stuff to fill this out. And this is going to take a little bit to go through, but, but keep with me. First of all, on the right, on the right is a preview of what your ad is going to look like. So this is very good. It's one of the best out there. You can really get a feel for how people are going to see your ads. And then they give you an idea of what makes a good ad over here. So they're telling you to add something called a headline to make these headlines unique to use popular words and to use a description and make a description unique headlines are the blue things right here that you're accustomed to clicking on when you do a google search those are called headlines and des descriptions are the black words that you can't click on on a typical google search ad that's what this is and you want this ad strength to be as high as possible excellent is the top level it goes excellent good poor i think is the next one good and excellent is okay poor is typically not okay you typically want to correct a poor rating right here on ad strength let's go over here to the left and again i'm selling the course so we'll keep with that first and foremost there's this concept called final url which is uh whatever you know advanced language what final url for your purposes is the page that you want people to visit to get introduced to your product and service it's the page you want to drive customers to in this case i'm making it my home page some of you it's forward slash you know landing page right whatever it may be. The reason they call it final is because you can actually, some people do tracking where they have other pages in between the click in the page they want people on. So they might uh, have some tracking software that says, hey, you need to pass people through this website first before they go to yours for me to track you. That's why it says final because you might wanna input another page that so Google knows they're going through there. This is a policy thing. If people are tunneling through another page for tracking, you got to disclose that to Google. All right. You disclose that at the bottom here. So add URL options like that's advanced. Most of you are not going to be doing that right now. All right, let's move on to display path because most of you are just going to use the final URL. What is the website that people can see on your ad? So right here is where you see it. This is your display path or your display URL. It's edited here. Right now, it just says www.dathanfairly.com because it says www.dathanfairly.com. So you could do forward slash and this can be the landing page they're landing on or you can add keywords here. I look at this as another marketing opportunity. If I wanted to show people just how relevant I am, I could add in Google ads course and then I can go 2024. All right. And what you will see over here is Google ads course 2024. So it's an extra piece of marketing, or you can show people like what, what landing page they're going to land on, basically what page of your website they're going to land on. 
both are okay. For now, I'm just going to leave it like that for fun. Uh, it might get me because I'm using Google Ads. I don't want to get a policy violation there. So let's just get rid of it. I'm not allowed to use Google Ads. It's a trademark term. Headlines is the next section. This is the, the nit and gritty. Basically, people click because of the headline over 90% of the time. The description adds to it, but it's really the headline. It's kind of like when you're on YouTube, <laughs> the title and thumbnail are like, man, why people click? Not necessarily the content of the video. And the same here. So they want you to use at least three headlines. That's a minimum requirement. What headline should you use? You can see here, you only get 30 characters. Right? So this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. This is the most difficult part of writing ads. I got to tell you, if you don't know what you're going to put here, because you're new and you're not really sure what's effective, I have a suggestion for you. There's many, many tools out there. Here's a real easy, free, basic one to do. This one will focus on getting your ad strength as high as possible. The reality is your first ads will not be your best ads. So don't even sweat it. Uh, you just need to get in the game. But you need to be relevant enough that people actually start clicking on your ads and you start getting business. I encourage you to go into Google and YouTube again. So I would do Google ads course 20. I'm going to do 23 uh, because there might not be stuff on 2024 yet. And what I would look for is two things. What is the competition doing? But more importantly, what is in the organic rankings? These people are on the top page. They're on the first page of Google. Their headlines are usually very relevant to the keyword. I would try to borrow what's on these organic listings and also look at this, these these recommended videos man i mean they are giving you great headline ideas they're a little too long some of these but this one doesn't google ads tutorial 2023 free course that one is short because maybe you only get 30 characters you can do the best you can with these Google Ads training on Skillshop. Google Ads for Beginners 2023. I like that one. I really like that one. Best Google Ads course 2023. Free and paid. Love those. So the reality is you don't need to be a rocket scientist for this stuff. Just go and take what's already out there. I like the organics. When you do the other sponsored ads, use those for inspiration, not necessarily directly copied because you know you need to have some differentiating factors between you and another ad. But the organics is a free for all, guys. By grabbing some of these, and I'm just gonna do Google Ads, tutorial 2024 i like that one google ads tutorial 2024 i love it oh i even like it like this even better now let's do course yeah course and i'll do tutorial on the next one google ads tutorial 2024 I'm giving multiple ones because what Google's going to do is they're going to rotate these different ads you can see these different combinations they will do over here as I'm flipping through them you can see them rotate them through in different places and this is cool this is called a responsive ad meaning they try to respond to a Google search with the headline that makes the most sense for the searcher that speaks the, the best to them. So you want to do actually as many, of the, as, as many of these as you can. You can even add additional ones there. If you're really stomped, if the organic thing didn't do it for you, which I think it's a great way to go, you can click view ideas and they will give you some ideas. Now you can see by adding those, my ad strength went up to poor. Okay, so I'm no longer incomplete. Now I'm just plain poor. I included popular keywords, but they want me to add more headlines and make them more unique. So you need to keep going through this process. And once you've gone through all the organics and you still haven't got enough excellent ad strength, try chat GPT or Bard. Hey, maybe Gemini one day. 
let's say I got everything I want there and now we're down to the description area the description or the two to four lines right you know that come right here you can see them here so you can only add up to four of these things um one two three and I can add one more the good thing is you get 90 characters on this one not just 30 this is how you should do your ads i'm gonna go over to the tablet all right there is a basic formula for ads that works universally in every industry the best google ads that basically work everywhere are three parts one problem two solution and three what we call a call to action the problem your ad needs to talk to the problem that people are trying to solve by doing that google search you can do questions struggling with google ads people are very self-centered and they are actively taking the time to do a google search so you should let them know hey i know why you're here two is the solution what you're actually providing for them what is the benefit they're going to get by clicking on this ad in this example learn all the ins and outs before you open a google ad ads campaign complete tutorial easy to use it's kind of a solution based thing so you need to have that in there as well and then call to action call to action is what you want people to do you have to tell people what to do you know click you can't say click here by the way but you can say learn more find out today join today buy now those are type of call to action phrases that tells people what to do watch this this video etc this is the basic formula that works universally for everyone as you get more advanced you'll find other formulas but starting out i would encourage you to use this i want to talk about the ad itself and why that ad strength they're telling you to do is important within doing one two and three problem solution call to action make sure you really focus on this ad strength and i'm going to show you why all right, this is like mega insider stuff. I mean, I've known this about Google for a really long time. Those of you who got this far in this tutorial are gonna learn things that other people don't know. Let me tell you something about Google search and that is how your ads are shown. Your ads are shown in what's called an auction system they literally auction off those searches to the best bidder i didn't say the highest bidder i said the best bidder now what is the best bidder so if me and 10 other advertisers are on google ads course 2024 how does google decide who's number one who's number two who's number three or who's shown it all who's at the top who's at the bottom it's an auction system and there is a formula for the auction system and i will tell you the formula the formula is bid bid means how much you're willing to pay for a click multiplied times something called quality score quality score we're going to talk about that here times something that is subjective called ad impact okay that equals ad rank concepts. Google just uses this stuff, assuming everyone just knows what this means. Bid, that's how much you're willing to pay to get a click. But let's say I'm willing to pay a dollar for someone to click on my ad, that's my bid. Multiply times my quality score. So quality score is Google. There, it's the, it's the casino, okay? <laughs> or the house in the casino is a better way to say it. That's what quality score is. And what Google is, they intervened into the auction process. They said, hey, we don't don't just want advertisers competing with themselves and the highest bidder gets the spot we want to have an element of quality because people trust google and we don't want low quality advertisers winning all the traffic so we're going to intervene as the house and we say hey the better the quality of your advertising the higher your chance of winning that spot quality score is actually a number between one and ten on a keyword you will see it in your account the higher the number so aka 10 out of 10 the more traffic you win 
and potentially the cheaper it costs to get the click. And I only say potentially. Ad impact is a weird one. What's the likelihood of the ad that you wrote having an impact to generate a click and to provide a good experience for people? This is super fluffy. It's not, it's not very scientific. So the, what I can tell you is the best way to raise ad impact as many of the technologies in the ad with best practices as Google provide. So what that means is we're working on the ad now and they're going to offer other things in this ad. They're going to offer something called site links and something called call outs and something called shout outs or call outs, excuse me, not shout out. You know, they're going to offer all these different things. The more you take and use, the higher your ad impact score will be. All of those gives you a number and it does give you a number called ad rank. Ad rank is the number that you have versus other advertisers. And the higher your ad rank, the more searches you will win and be shown on Google and the higher on the page you will show. The person who's number one on Google at the top that gets 100% of the traffic, they have the highest rad ad rank of everyone. How does it determine how much you're gonna pay? If I bid $1, and let's say that that formula all comes back to my ad rank being, let's say 100. I, that puts me at number two. I get good traffic, but I'm number two. And let's say the number one person beat me out. They have an ad rank of 101. How much am I going to pay? Well, I'm only going to pay one cent more than number three. So if number three's ad rank is 90, I only pay one cent more than them. That is how this system works. And I know you're totally confused. Don't worry about it. This becomes important as you become an expert in this stuff. I just know this. That is a part of the ad system that is affecting how much you're shown and how much you're paying and how high on the page you are. Let's stay on the concept of quality score. Okay. I want us to stay here because this is important. I told you before to go to the organics and to, and you got all these organics on the first page of Google and they're all ranked very high. These are very good organic rankings, it's a major SEO going on here. They're majorly re relevant to the term and to use those headlines if you can. The reason why I want you to pull those into your ads is the components of what make a high quality score. Quality score is super important and you need to know how this is made up. 100% of your score is made up of these three factors, one, two, and three. And they have different effects on your ads performance based on how well you're doing. So let me break this down. The vast majority is something called CTR. That is called click through rate. Click through rate. Out of 100% of the time that your ad was shown to a searcher, what percentage of the time did they actually choose to click your ad? If they show your ad 10 times and you got one click out of the 10 times they shown you, you have a 10% click through rate. Because Google's in this to make money, this is the number one weighted factor for quality score. This makes up 55 to 65 percent of what your quality score is going to be. That is monstrous. When I talk about problem, solution, and call to action, the better you do this, I'm going to go call to action, the better you do this, the cheaper your clicks are, the more traffic you get, the higher the page is, the higher your quality score is going to be. The next thing is relevance. Relevance is what all those organic rankings are doing. They are highly relevant to the term. So Google Ads, Course 2024, those people are super relevant to it. You That makes up mm, 35 to 45% of what your quality score is. I don't really care a lot about how your first ads are. If you follow this formula, problem, solution, call to action, and then you're relevant by using the headlines and descriptions of the organics, you're anywhere from 85 to let's say 95%, let's say 70 to 95% of the equation. Maybe, maybe it is 85 to 90. Like it's a big chunk of the equation. Okay. You can win just with those. This last part, 10 to 15%, 
is the relevance of the landing page, aka when people click your ad, what is the final URL they are landing on? That's 10 to 15% of the score. They give you scoring on this, and maybe I can show you in another video, but they will tell you how good they think your landing page is based on how relevant it is to the keyword. The last thing you want to do is do all this great work on CTR and relevance, and then you just fumble the ball on the page people land on from the ad and just throw all that good work away. You might as well just top it off with a good experience on a landing page. This is how quality score works. This is little known. You just learn something few people even know about, and that will help you in your ad making. So let's go back to the ad. Now remember, you're creating ads not just for your desktop experience, but also for mobile ads. And the thing you need to understand is just how much search traffic is mobile ads. A cell phone and a tablet, that today is probably 70%, closer to 80% of all traffic. And only 20% is on a desktop or a laptop. So when you really think about these ads, you really need to be thinking about it in a mobile sense. I'm just going to finish the this part of the ad. Let's say over here, join the number one Google Ads training course for 2024. Let's say free for everyone. Sign up today. There's something simple to move past this. So what I'm gonna do is move down here for site links. So remember ad impact. This is the first thing you're starting to see that adds additional scores to your ad impact. A site link are the additional blue looking headlines underneath the main headline. It might say contact us, buy today, whatever. And when you click them, it takes you to a very, it takes you to its own landing page. It's kind of additional headlines. This is additional advertising for you. I encourage encourage you to use this. It says use a minimum of four, but definitely use them. The best site links are the ones that still have relevant keywords in them. You can't always do that, but it's usually better. So let's take a Google Ads course 2024 as an example. I can have my Google Ads course for 2023 as a site link. Google Ads 101 training with Dathan for Google Ads on here. You know, things like that that are keyword dense, but still adds value to the searcher. They are going to have the highest impact on your ad impact. But if you need to do about us, contact us, things like that, they work as well, just not preferred. The next thing, I'm just gonna expand more asset types, promotions. What promotions are, and I'm just gonna show you what it looks like here, is if let's say like I have a 50% off sale going on, you can put in the discount here, let's say it's a percentage. I can say 50% because it gives me 50% off. And I can say it's a special occasion. Let's say we're doing um, a New Year's sale. It's 2024, so New Year's. And then you can say on your Google Ads course, and then you give it a final URL. So where the actual set where they can purchase the sale at, which I don't have on here, so I'm making up. So you can see here on the right, you can have new years, 50% off Google ads course. That's what promotions are calls again you add your phone number people have the ability to see your phone number on a google ad click it and talk to you google policy thing here you are not allowed to put your phone number in the headline or description that is a policy violation and will get you in trouble uh, the next thing is called call outs oh i guess i skipped prices so this just lists, you know, some of the prices for some of the things. So you can see here, you can put, um, if it's for an event here, let's do services for me. Price color. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that one. So this is for my Google ads course. Uh, let's say it costs, you know, zero. <laughs> I can't put zero. Let's say it costs $5 and then I describe it. You know, you put the description, you put the final URL, um, you, and then you can add more. So let's say there's a second product I want to put on there. So you can add your different products and the pricing there. 
that's going to be valuable for some of you, not for everyone. But again, the more of these you can use, the higher your ad impact, you know, and it could be better for you long term. Let me move on to call outs because this one you guys would have never seen before and conceptually doesn't make a lot of sense. Call outs are shout outs. It is really an opportunity to shout at the people what you want them to pay attention to. Lowest price online that's like a shout out and again when it comes to shout outs the more keyword dense you can make these the more effective they're going to be as far as ad impact but remember you are writing these for the searcher you're not trying to manipulate the google algorithm i'm gonna skip past that next one structured snippets Structured snippets. I'm sorry. It just why does Google make things so complicated? Structured snippet. Structured snippets are essentially you showing the areas you specialize in. So right here, I'm gonna click select header type. So let's say for me it I have a service catalog. But if you have different businesses, obviously, if you're in a hotel business, you have amenities, featured hotels, a destination, you know, if you're in that type of stuff. I'm selling a course and I have a service catalog. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose courses. And here I'm going to put the different courses I have. I have a Google Ads course. And I'm going to put 2024, keep it highly relevant. Let's say I have a Facebook ads course for 2024, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes on and on. An example for the lipstick one, I could say, okay, let's do the lipstick one. So let's say I have a lipstick. I have lip gloss. I have eyeliner. Or I could, and that would fall under types now if i have if i want to put brands let's say i have to do reveling oh, again don't kill me if i'm spelling this wrong reveling i don't know uh mary k i'm gonna give up so then i'm gonna go here and i'm going to choose either models or brands the brands is a good one let's do brands now, here's the cool thing about structured snippets. You can have more than one type of structure snippet. So let's say I wanted to do brands. I do all brands. I click save. I come back and I add another structured snippet set. And let's say this time I want to do types. I would have one for brands and one for types. And Google will decide when to show them. They, they really are effective. Next one is lead forms. If you wanted to add a lead form, you can do it here. Again, it's probably easier if you are going to put forms on Google search for people to fill out, then you probably need to choose lead form as a type with your goal. It will make it more easy to do there. Lead forms are very expensive because they're hard to get. You've built no rapport with people and you want a lead form. They come in, but they cost a lot of money. Again, you can add your app here. We're not going to cover these two. These are very specialized. If I did everything, hopefully my ad strength would be excellent. It says poor right now, so we're just gonna deal with it. Now, before I click next, I don't want a policy violation because I'm not actually creating this campaign well and we gotta get the billing and all of that. If I put my URL in there and I hit next and you know, I'm skipping all this stuff, I'm not doing this properly, Google knows all about me and they know like I'm not doing a good job here. I could get a policy violation and I don't want one. So what I'm going to do for now is just put in www.example.com so I don't send any bad signals to Google about my website. All right, so I'm going to click next. The next screen talks about how do you want to bid? Hey, you're going to compete in this auction by saying you're willing to pay money. How do you want to say you're willing to pay money like for a click? How do you want to do it? And this is where Google's AI systems come into play. 
this is pretty cool. They, they, they made it really expensive now, and I actually kind of like it. So I'm going to break down each of these. You can learn more by clicking here, but I'm just going to tell you from my perspective as someone doing this a while, which ones make the most sense for a beginner. The first one, it says conversions. If you wanted to focus on conversions, meaning a conversion, and again, they just throw that word out there like you're supposed to know what that means. A conversion is the action, the desired result that you want. If we are trying to sell courses, when I sell a course, that would be a conversion. You can do conversions as your focus. So what's going to happen if we choose that, then Google's going to bid up and down whenever someone searches for your term that matches all your criteria, trying to get a sale. Now, what you can do to control that, because that can get out of hand. So that means that they could bid $100 per click. If they think it's going to result into a sale, that could be out of your price range. So what you can do is you can set a target cost per action. Again, big language here. What they mean is, hey, I need for my sales to only cost this amount of money. I want course sales, but don't, I, I, they need to be $25 or under. If I click this, I can put $25 and says, hey, go get as many conversions as you can get, man, but they need to be around 25 bucks. They call it target CPA, so you know. If I click down, they have other ones that they recommend and they have conversion value, which I don't encourage you to use that when you're new. This basically targets how much in a sale you get. Right. That does have a place, um, and we start doing things called ROAS, which is return on ad spend. They have other optimization strategies, which I actually think are pretty cool. There's one for clicks, so basically it bids to get as many clicks as possible, or it bids to get as much, again, a phrase here, impression share as possible. They don't even explain what that is. What impression share is, let's start with what an impression is, and then we'll talk about impression share. An impression is literally you showed up on Google search and someone saw you. So when I type in Google ads course 2024 and your ad pops up, that's an impression. Impression share is what percentage of all those searches you are getting. So you can bid to get a higher or lower impression share. Now, with all of these, what do I recommend? I recommend clicks or conversions. Conversions sounds the best, but you are a brand new account. Google's AI system has no data on you. I do not like coming out the gate with conversions. I choose clicks here and I want to get as many clicks with in my budget as possible because I showed you 55 to 65% of the equation is click-through rate. So if they can give me the most clicks possible, my scores, my ad ranks, my quality scores, they're gonna raise up and I'm gonna get more traffic and cheaper traffic over time. Now that being said, this thing can get crazy. It can start giving you clicks out the wazoo for a ridiculous price. So you might want to limit how much you're willing to pay for that click. Last thing you want to do is take a hundred dollar click to get maximum clicks. So here's where you say, hey, give me as many clicks as possible. But I don't want to pay no more than a buck, okay? Or two bucks or whatever the case may be. I like click strategy. I'm going to choose that one. That one has the, it sets up my account the best long-term by giving it. And remember, you can only start what, you know, Google search is very forgiving. You can start all over, but your quality scores in the beginning are harder to raise. You can raise them, but they're harder to raise. So you might as well do it the best possible from the beginning. So I'm gonna click next. And what you're going to see on the next page is they're going to ask how much you're willing to spend, like your daily budget. We're going to talk about that. It's going to ask you, how much do you want to spend per day? And it's going to give you some recommendations. There are recommendations here on how much to spend in advertising on a daily basis are really based on how expensive they think your clicks are going to cost. In my example, they think if I have a budget of $900, that my clicks will be 97 cents and I'll get 6,499 clicks a day. Well, that sounds promising. It's probably totally untrue, but 
That being said, regardless if it's true or not, as a new advertiser or someone getting back in the game, do not spend a lot of money. Remember, your first ads are not going to be the best ads you ever create. So we try to make them relevant to get the highest relevant scores, but you will get better over time. So go down to custom budget tell them how much you're willing to spend a day 10 bucks a day 20 bucks a day i think it's perfectly fine for a beginner i need to tell you how this works though because you it doesn't work exactly like they say when i tell google that my budget is ten dollars a day that doesn't mean they can only spend ten dollars a day your budget is calculated on a monthly basis or a net 30 basis. They basically take $10 and they multiply it by 30. They get $300 and they say, okay, for them, for the next 30 days, I actually have $300 to spend. They don't care how they start, but by the end of the 30 days, they're, they need to hit $300. So it's actually possible on day one to spend a hundred dollars. And then in the future days, they make up for it and spend less so that by the end of the 30 days you're at 300 bucks so this daily spend is nothing more than a suggestion this is why you got to be careful about your daily spend google says they can spend up to two and a half times your daily spend so they can spend 25 dollars a day 25 dollars a day even though you said at 10 no repercussions man no repercussions now if they go above that they make it free they won't charge you for it or they'll refund you the money but just keep that in mind all right i'm doing ten dollars a day click next and the next part is all about how you're going to pay your google bill you talk about policy stuff okay and i say policy i mean you know the google police the rules the people just you know like there's an ftc for the government and uh f CC Air, FEC Airways or whatever for TV. Google has their own rules enforcement. They call it Google Policy Team. And the, uh, more accounts are suspended on this screen than just about anything. So your billing information needs to be 100% accurate. What you're putting in here, what's actually in your banking or financial institutions need to be. Ugh. And if you, if you sign up kind of like a personal Google Ads account, remember that I showed that thing where it says optional for organization name and if you put your personal name there you can't use a business card here or you're going to have a problem i see this mistake all the time people open up personal google ads accounts or individual google ads account and then they try to use their business like an llc billing and stuff and they just it's just a problem let's go through this screen really important First, I'm in the United States. So you can actually change this to where your billing is. And, you know, in the EU and the UK, I know y'all do some, y'all got the VAT over there and things get really, oh, I do not envy you at VAT. That just seems horrible. But in the United States, we don't have a VAT. So don't have to worry about it. In the United States, I'm in, you, you change the time zone. Um, New York time is here. Sometimes I'm in Arizona. New York time, if you have an offer code. So if you're joining Google ads, because someone gave you a code to start, you put it in here. About offer codes, let's talk about policy here. You are only allowed one promo code per person, okay? If you've already opened up a previous Google Ads account, you can't use another promo code here. The only exception to that rule is if you've been off of advertising for a while. So all of you people that used to use AdWords and you're coming over to Google Ads now, you can use a promo code because you've been off the platform for a long time. If you've had, let's say, last year or two, do not use a promo code it will get you suspended as promo code abuse the next thing is create a payment profile and this is where the rubber meets the road guys i can't tell you how important this is here we are profile type organization or individual if you're running a business if you're a nonprofit, if you're a church you choose organization there are only a few cases where individual makes sense to me but if you're watching this, it's probably because you're running a business. So choose organization. This could come back to bite you later. You put your name there. Again, I'm just going to put, let's say my billing is, this is your payments profile. This is what you got to remember. It has to match my credit card or my banking um, for checking or whatever. This stuff needs to match up. If I have an LLC called Dathan Fairley LLC and I have a 
credit card under Dathan Fairley LLC. It goes to me as Dathan Fairley under the company Dathan Fairley LLC. Or I have a checking account. That checking account better say Dathan Fairley LLC on it. That all, that's a all better matchup. And it asks for the legal name. If the legal name is different than the organization name, you need to make sure the legal name is accurate. And I mean, so I've seen some weird things. Sometimes it says DB, like those of you who are using a DBA under the Secretary of State here in the United States, it might say DBA, Dathan Fairley, LLC. That might be what it is. Just make sure it's 100% accurate though. Uh, and then of course your zip code there. This is interesting because I'm trying to show you this, but if I do this from, you know, I can get a policy violation. Let's see if I can move past this. I don't want to trick Google and do something wrong. So I'm going to click out of that. All right, then you add your payment method. Oh, it won't let me do it. Okay, let me go back and do the payment profile. I'm very hesitant in this tutorial because I don't want to violate Google policy and have it hanging over my head. So I'm just going to do this like this and I'm going to click create. Okay. You can see there, it created a profile for me. Now you can add a payment method. Now you can see there's a temporary $50 authorization, which will be removed. But what I'm going to do is I'm in the United States. So I have a couple of options. International people don't have these options. You might only have credit card or you might only have bank account. We have both here in the United States. So I'm gonna show you what both looks like. If I click add credit card, it looks pretty standard. Card number, this security code. You need to let them know, are the billing address and the legal address the same? You better be accurate here because if the, if the billing address is different than the legal address of the business, you need to uncheck that so that you can put in the details. So, so for now, we'll just say, it is. I'm going to cancel that and show you what a bank account looks like. If I click that, you will put the bank name. You can put, is it a checking, savings, or business account? Let's just say it's a business account. And then you put the routing number and then the account number in there. I'm going to click cancel. I don't know if they're going to let me move on without putting stuff in here. I hope so. In the previous interface, we were able to not to move on without putting that in here. There's some of the changes for 2024. And then they're going to ask you, do you want a Google salesperson to call you and convince you to spend more money on their platform than you're comfortable spending? <laughs> That's what that means. Now, I'm not saying they, there's, you know, no assistance here, but these are salespeople and their job is to make you spend more money on Google. So I'm going to say no. How about no? Let's see if they let me move forward without this stuff. All right, I was able to move past that. You need to be very cautious when you're putting in billing details. I don't want to do anything to harm my relationship with Google. So I got around this with the billing issue because that's suspension city written all over it with inaccurate details. You can see here on the next screen, now they want us to confirm our billing information, like what country you're in after we put in all of our credit card information and uh, if you use a checking account, all your checking account information and it's going to do test deposits into your account. If you did choose checking account and they did test deposits, they're going to put a couple of test deposits in and then you have to wait a couple of days for them to show up on your bank statement and then you come back into Google ads and verify the amounts they put in and took out and then you can move forward to this step and now we're going to choose what country our billing is in, the time zone, the dollar amount. I'm going to use US currency no, I don't want a phone expert and I'm going to click submit here. All right. The next section has to do with tracking the success of your campaigns. So remember we went over those sections called conversions and I introduced the concept of what that is. That's basically getting your desired result. Well, Google could actually tell you how much of your desired result that you got. And this is called conversion tracking. And they do that through coding that you put on your website. They call the coding pixels. The next section is where you're going to put Google coding on your website. Now you can see here, they want to install these Google tags onto my website. So they give you pretty good instructions here. If you're not ready to do this now, that's okay. But ultimately you click to copy this Google tag and you're basically going to put it in 
in the in the header of every page on your website, you're going to put this code on there. So Google can actually track the events of what visitors are doing when they're on your website. You need to take your time and read through this because this is just the, the basic tracking pixel. But the other thing is, you know, what platform are you using? Are you using WordPress? Are you using ClickFunnels? Are you, you know, all this other shabazz? That's what this will be. They didn't, they, they're not aligned with mine, but let's say you use WordPress. It will default to WordPress right here. If you're not ready to do this now and you want to get past this to continue on, you click test connection. Of course, it's going to fail because we don't have it set up. So once it comes back failed, then we're able to, you know, skip past this section. So let's wait for it to fail. And you see it failed. Your tag wasn't detected. So now that it failed, this new option shows up right here called I'll do this later. So we'll click on it to get past this. Yes, I'll do it later. All right. Um, so the next thing it says is turn on enhanced conversions for your account. I honestly think everyone should have this on. You don't, it's an advanced strategy, even though you're just getting started, but for now, just leave it on. And later on, you'll, you'll be happy. I told you to do this. All right. So I'm going to agree and continue. And I'm going to set up this tag later. So now that you're here, basically they're going to review your campaigns. It goes through a review process for everything before they go live. I often go in here and pause my campaigns because I don't want them running just yet until I know all the billing and everything went through for my clients. Again, I'm an account manager, so I really keep a tight rein on everything. I don't like my clients being in bad situations. This this is how you set up your first campaign budget billing the entire account for Google ads. Let me just give some final thoughts for you as you go and try to set this up. What we went over today, you can use to get started and you're going to set yourself up for a great career here in 2024. And I tell you, a lot of people that did not get some of these insider things in this course are going to be behind you and you're going to have an advantage over them. If you don't want to do any of this stuff by yourself or you're creating your first campaigns and you really want an expert to help you do that hey contact me we'll get you set up get you off and running with awesome campaigns to start building success and profit until next time